we're always told to, to see our doctor before we start any uh, health regimen. If we're do, starting an anti-aging plan, are there uh, tests or things that we need to know beforehand? Well, yeah, there's, uh, the next step up is then assuming, now I know you should never assume, you, know, you can make a dang, dang, dang out of yourself, et cetera, et cetera. But if all health practices are done correctly, the next step up is to see how your or my aging body responds to it, right? And then we do blood analysis. And that mainly focuses on uh, hormones, right? I mean, we have the testosterones, we have the estrogens, we have the growth hormone, we have the chorionic gonadotrophin, we have a lot of various different hormones that play a role in aging, right? For example, under your sternum, you have a little organ, the thymus, and that thymus atrophies as we get older. Now, directly proportional to the decrease of the thymus, the shriveling away, we have an, an increase in cancer. That's really interesting. That's a very bottom line. And in the thymus, there's another hormone that's made. It's called thymidine, and there are ways to stimulate that thymidine hormone, right? And so, in essence, we, we, look at <clears throat> we look at all the basic requirements for endocrine control in your body, right? And, uh, well, we know it gets expensive to some degree because recently <laughs> everybody, I guess, is an aging yourself a little bit older is using growth hormones, right? I mean, that should be obvious. Well, the manufacturers, in a not quite, uh, as I see it, fair approach, they raise the prices tremendously, right? You know, like uh, the minimum of uh, growth hormone, five milligrams, that's 15 units, three units per milligram, uh, spread over a month, that is a half a unit per day, right? That will cost you, if you get a prescription and go to the pharmacy and get this, about $600. Now, that's why a lot of doctors, like I work in Torrance and Redondo Beach in, in California, and uh, several MDs that I work with, we actually buy the growth hormone from the manufacturer at a wholesale bulk cost. And then our MD only adds a few dollars to it, right? But most recently, they have increased the most basic thing by $100 increase, right? And so it really gets a little bit problematic for some people who are not really exactly floating in money, right? I mean, you start with the basics. I mean, testosterone shots and so on and so on. And that, that's also important uh, how you do that because you have to do the hormones cycling on and off. If you just make up the difference, like your hormone level is here and that's what it should be. If you make up the difference every day, it doesn't work. It works for a few days, and then your body says, oh, I have enough hormones, so it makes less testosterone. Then you have to give more. Then it makes less, and they have to give more. And if you continue that, it would actually lead to a testicular atrophy. On the other hand, if you take um, testosterone for about nine days, and then you quit for nine days, there's nothing there, and your body says, I better make my own. And your battery revs up its own hormone, and then you put testosterone on top of that, and that gives better results. Cycling is most important for everything. Now, even with growth hormone, the growth hormone, the uh, uh, half-life of growth hormone in your body is only about six hours. But still, I work with a very famous Olympic trainer. That's the guy who developed the uh, exercise program that literally every major, I mean football, basketball, all the teams are using. It's called the super circuit, right? And when we put athletes on the various approaches, we find that it's better if you do growth hormone for three or four days, twice the amount, and then for three or four days, nothing. And the bottom, right, bottom results are much better, right? Okay, well, that, that's one of the areas, you know, that you look at. <clears throat> and then sometimes you find something that's really baffling, amazing, really nice. Like uh, I was at one of the A4M meetings here, and there was an exhibitor with a new type of deer antler extract. See, deer antler extract has been known for thousands of years, right? I mean, they used to grind it up and they boil it in water and so on. Still effective. But this is a new approach. 
They grind it very nicely with some steel ball at a lower temperature, put it in a solvent equivalent to you know, something like red wine or so, right? And let it sit extract. And when they then concentrate it, the analysis shows that the deer antler extract actually has IGF-1 in it. Now, IGF-1, this is a blood component that you measure to determine if you should give a patient or you should prescribe growth hormone, right? So anyway, and I was talking to them and they said, you want to try a sample? I said, yeah, sure. So anyway, I did. When I went home, I was supposed to start growth hormone again, and I didn't. And I was really amazed because I sure thought I would lose some muscle mass. I actually had maintained it. So I called the company and uh, uh, Bioprotein Tech, I think it is. But anyway, I called them. They sent me a couple of more sand, uh, bottles. And I did this for three months. I got totally off growth hormone. I used the quite a bit less expensive, strongest extract of the Valvadir antler, and I actually gained two pounds of muscle mass. Now, see, that's a possibility of saving some money, you know? And so many different areas uh, come in along those lines.